going to Portland? Okay, Portland has this wonderful transit system there. You don't even need to own a car in Portland. Because you can get around most anywhere you want to go, you can get on their light rail system. If you do need a car, there's a service there called Zipcar. Anybody heard of Zipcar? Okay. Zipcar, where you, you become a member of the Zipcar program, and you take and say, look, I need the car from 1 o'clock in the afternoon till 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Can you reserve the car for me? The car is reserved for you. You walk out of your, your apartment, your house, walk a short distance. There's the car sitting to you. You've got like a smart card on. You wave the smart card over the thing. The door opens. You get in. You go drive it. Come back, park it, lock it, walk away. They've charged you for the four hours that you've driven the car. Don't need a car. Um, so, it's, so those are some of the kind of things that's going to start, we're going to start seeing changing. Now we've we got about two minutes. Anybody want to ask any questions? Have I depressed you enough now? <laughs> these, these, are, these are realities you're going to, you know, that we're going to have to, I have to deal with, you'll have to deal with. I mean, that's just, that's the way the numbers work out. You know, unless, unless somebody can find unobtainium. Anybody see Avatar? Okay, yeah, great movie. And they got this, this stone that kind of floats there, anti-gravity stone. Unless we can come up with anti, you know, with unobtainium in some way to, uh, or we find out how the aliens power their spaceships, right? Um, uh, you know, if, if, we're if we're still dependent on, if we're still dependent on sunlight and, and crops and things like that, this is what transportation of the future is going to look like. Yes? <laughs> no, well, this, is, this doesn't happen to be a conspiracy theory. I mean, this is, this is what's happening, yes. What are your thoughts on nuclear power? Nuclear power is really an interesting subject. I come so close to buying into it. I come so close, and then I keep backing away because I start hearing all these, oh. The, the latest one is this one that Babcock and Wilcox has designed this new nuclear reactor smaller than a uh, freight car. Uh, wow, they got these little mini reactors, you know, and I can sort of sit this mini reactor outside my home or it'll go in my car. Do you know what this smaller than a freight car is? It's enormous. Yeah, there's this little part of it, the central sort of, you know, rods and control assembly that's kind of small, but all the other paraphernalia equipment and shielding and everything around it, you know, is huge. So I, th I get this close. I'm, I've actually stood on the very first nuclear reactor to power, to produce electric power in uh, Idaho Falls, Idaho. You know, and there's a light bulb that hangs from the ceiling. That was the first light bulb ever lit by a nuclear reactor, like 1947 or 48 or something like that. So I, I come really close, but I still have these reservations. I just don't know if that's something that we want to bequeath to future generations. Because what are we giving them? We get 40 years of power, they get 400,000 years of radioactive waste. You know, I just, I just, I just have those issues with it. So, it, it, anyway, thank you so much. I think time is up.